Beretta has been making small tip-up barreled pistols since the 50s. This was a very innovative design. In fact, this little Beretta 950 was James Bond's very first pistol. And at the very beginning of the first movie, this was replaced with a small little 380. Carrying around a 25 in Europe was supposedly sufficient for self-defense. So for many years, and I think this is really before, of course, the internet and gun magazines, the 25 ACP was thought to be somewhat of a decent self-defense round. And of course, Europe has used 32 ACP for a number of years, and it is still very popular. And then, of course, we have the Tomcat, the 3032, which Beretta introduced a few years ago, and that's the latest of the tip-up barrel designs. The Model 21 Beretta in 22 and 25 ACP has been also a very popular gun, made in double action. Single action 950, double action Model 21, and double action 3032. Both the Tomcat and the Model 21 Bobcat are offered in stainless steel. Now the Beretta Model 86, which is now discontinued, was in 380. And really the reason for the discontinuance of that pistol was because of the size. Most of your 380 pistols years ago were actually not much smaller than a 9mm. And once all these micro compact pistols started coming around, especially in 380, there was no need for a large frame uh, Beretta uh, in 380 or the Browning 380 or the, even the SIG had, a, had some large 380s. But one of the reasons the tip-up barrel was so popular was because of its ease of being able to be loaded. It was really simple to load. People weren't intimidated by pulling a slide back. And I remember when I first started shooting guns, pulling that slide back was a little bit intimidating. It can be done on the small little uh, tip-up barrel Berettas, but there is no need for it. The barrel pops up, you place the round in, and then you close it and it's ready to fire. One of the things about the Beretta design is that there is no hood over the barrel. The barrel is completely free. Some people say, well, that allows for debris and other things to get in the, in the action. But one of the things it does do, and an advantage, is it keeps from failures to feed, especially if the slide's coming back, it doesn't get caught on the upper part of the slide. And that's one of the reasons why the Beretta 92 became so popular, is that it was pretty functional uh, where other pistols may jam in harsh conditions. One of the things that you're going to note, though, is most of these pistols need decent ammunition, especially the Model 21. Really, using CCI stingers or mini mags are best. Now, the 950 is the only single action of the bunch, and that means that you can pull the trigger and it will not actuate the hammer. You have to pull the hammer back to fire this pistol. After that, all eight rounds will be expended in, in the semi-automatic mode. This pistol comes in 25 ACP, and it also comes in 22 short. The 25 ACP is the jet fire. The 22 short is the minx. And there is also the target uh, minx, which has a longer barrel. And you can see it in this photograph right here. It's a little bit unorthodox looking for a, such a small pistol. But these were considered target pistols. The Model 21 is in double action. That means when I pull this trigger, the hammer will come back. It is a fairly thick design here. And because it's double action, there's a little bit more going on. So it makes it quite a bit larger than the little 25. But this really makes for very comfortable shooting. With this small little tang here, it keeps your hand from getting slide bite unless you have really beefy hands. One of the things I specifically like about the Beretta style pistol is that it gives a little more in the hand. It's a small pistol and it has small dimensions, but the grips are typically fairly beefy. And this really helps with being able to stay on target. I know a lot of these small little super thin micro uh, pocket guns in 380 are sometimes very difficult to keep on target with this small round and then with the width of the grip these are a lot of fun to shoot and while this is a little bit larger than most it's still an excellent pocket pistol one of the things that i read recently uh, on a forum where a lot of cia operatives most of them retired were talking about having a 22 in country and that out of all the pistols that they would have they'd rather have a small little beretta model 21 than have a larger caliber pistol uh, it's easier to obtain ammo, it's quieter, and it's really easy to hide. And it was really fascinating reading that article because I've never really considered 22 caliber to be an excellent self-defense round. But the one thing you have to consider is that when you are completely unarmed, having a firearm gives you some advantages, no matter what the caliber. With Beretta introducing the Tomcat, this revived the notion that the tip-up barrel was still alive and well. 
and excellent for a self-defense caliber pistol. Uh, one of the things that I found with my own mother, which has arthritis in her hands, was that many of the pistols, including a Smith & Wesson Snubnose Model 36, she could not pull the trigger back. And it really kind of surprised me because she had been shooting some automatics for a while. But uh, when we really went to pick her out a concealed carry pistol, this was one of the considerations because of the tip-up barrel. She didn't have to rack the slide with her hands. So an elderly person or a person with weak hands can actuate all this without having to exert a lot of strength by pulling the slide back. This slide can be pulled back, but it is pretty hefty. Now in the end, she decided to choose the SIG P238, and the reason for that was the slide was so easy to pull back. It's just amazing. Of course, the SIG P238 is about 50% more than the Beretta Tomcat. I think either one of them would make an excellent concealed carry option or self-defense option for the elderly or for those with weak hands. The tip-up design was really innovative, and it allowed for weak-handed shooters to be able to load easy. And not only weak-handed, but people that really were concerned about safety, uh, wanting to be able to just go ahead and place a round in the chamber without having to rack the slide. And this is a really great safety feature, and one of the reasons why these were so popular. Their compact size is fantastic. Uh, until the polymer frame pistols came along and really got the size of semi-automatics down to a really micro package. Of course, Browning had the baby Browning. Uh, Colt had their small little 25 ACP. And there were a few that were around that were real considered pocket pistols that were of real high quality. But Beretta really had such an innovative design. The Jetfire weighs 10 ounces. You move up to the Bobcat or the Model 21 and it's 12 ounces. The Tomcat weighs one pound, or 16 ounces. Now the Model 86, which was discontinued, is in 380 ACP. It weighs about 24 ounces, or just under one and a half pounds. The Beretta 950 and 25 ACP does carry eight rounds in the magazine. Uh, if you get the 22 short or the Minx, it's only six rounds. The Model 21 Bobcat holds seven rounds in 22 long rifle. In the 25 ACP version, it holds eight rounds. The Tomcat holds seven rounds, and the Model 86 carried eight shots. So you're talking about a fairly large frame pistol with only eight shots, and of course Beretta was smart to go ahead and retire that pistol. The popularity of these little tip-up barrels in the Beretta line have been popular for a number of years, and continue to have a strong following. In fact, these sometimes are very difficult to find unless you can find them on the used market because the demand is there. I definitely suggest checking your ammo first with the Model 21. With the right ammo, these are very functional. If you get bulk ammo, sometimes you're gonna have some issues with them. This little Model 950 is one of the most reliable small little pistols I've ever owned. I've never had any jamming issues with it. It just keeps on firing. And this Model 32 also has been a very reliable, very nice and accurate pistol. Now, of course, Taurus has a line of tip-up barrels as well. But Taurus bought the license from Beretta when Beretta set up a plant down in Brazil originally to make the 92s. And that's where Taurus gets its PT-92 and PT-99. Uh, they also have their series of the small pocket pistols and the tip-up barrel, and those are also licensed by Beretta. In fact, one of the original owners of Taurus actually worked for Beretta in Italy. Now, because of this lockup system with the barrel, it lends itself to be very accurate. This barrel does not move. It's a very stable platform. So any of the tip-up barrels typically are very accurate little pistols. Many people have a love-hate relationship with the Beretta tip-up barrels. Either you love them or you just don't like them. And, you know, that's up to the individual. But for me, I've always had great experiences with the tip-up barrel line from Beretta. I think if you're looking for something fun and something of high quality, a little Beretta in a tip-up barrel is a great gun to add to your collection. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. So the Beretta 950 comes in, okay. but one of the, but one of the reasons that the Beretta little, but one of the reasons the tip-up barrel was so popular, one of the great things, one of the great things about the the Beretta. Now one of the things that's, 
One of the things about the Beretta design, and out of the whole set, this little 950 is still my favorite. All weak, 25 caliber and all.